Hello, my name is Olivier Commanda. I am Editor-in-Chief of Foreign Policy Digest, and I'd like to introduce you to our video series, Know the World You Live In. Today we are joined by Knight Kiplinger, Editor-in-Chief of Kiplingers.com, uh, and we're talking about the international economy, the effect it has on U.S. jobs, on wages, and everything else you read about in the newspapers. So, welcome. Nice to be with you, Olivier. For someone who picks up the newspaper today and reads about high gas prices and outsourcing and all the things that the external uh, international economy is imposing on our economy, uh, what solace, what explanation can you give them about what responsibility Americans have for the, uh, the state of the economy versus the rest of the world? For many years, America has been living beyond its means. We are very reliant on foreign credit, loans from overseas governments, overseas investors to fund the U.S. budget deficit, to fund the U.S. trade deficit. The United States is the world's leading exporter. Some people think that we're an, an anemic, muscle-bound giant whose goods are not uh, competitive in global markets, not sought after. That's not the case at all. American manufacturers, American agriculture, American services outsell those of every other nation in global markets. The U.S. is the number one exporter. But we're also the number one importer. We buy more goods and services from the rest of the world than any other nation. And with petroleum accounting for a big part of these imports and the dollar-denominated price of petroleum rising, our trade deficit is at near record levels today. So it's not that we, we're not competitive in selling well to the global economy, it's just we're buying more from overseas than we are selling abroad. And this has depressed the dollar. Well, picking up on uh, your comment about the dollar and the U.S. currency, give us a little bit of an explanation as to what factors contribute, contribute to the, the price or the fluctuation of a currency's price. Normally, the level of a, of a nation's currency vis-a-vis -vis other currencies reflects the strength and dynamism of an, its economy. At a functional level, you have to buy the currency of another country to buy their products, to buy their goods, or to invest in that country. You can't invest in your own currency. You have to convert your currency into the, uh, the denomination of the, of the home uh, government. Right now, the very low level of the dollar against the Chinese currency, the Japanese yen, the European euro should say that the United States is one of the sickest economies uh, on the globe, but it isn't. That means the U.S. dollar is artificially low. It's lower than the fundamentals would suggest. There is still a strong desire of foreigners to invest in the United States for which they have to buy dollars. There's still a strong demand for U.S products, exported goods and services all over the world, for which other nations have to buy dollars. Uh, we know that, that the U.S. dollar is uh, undervalued uh, against the Chinese currency, uh, but the Chinese currency should be much stronger than it is, reflecting their large trade credits. Uh, the odds are pretty good that as the European Central Bank cuts its interest rates, which are abnormally high right now, especially given the, the softness that's coming in the European economy, that the dollar will firm up. Uh, as other nations experience some of the economic slowdown that the United States went into a bit earlier than they did, the dollar will strengthen. Uh, ten years ago, the dollar was artificially high against other currencies. Right. Uh, it kept inflation low in the United States, but it really hurt the sale of U.S. products and goods and services overseas. Today, American exporters are benefiting enormously from the low dollar. Uh, all over Europe and Asia, U.S. heavy equipment, environmental equipment, energy generation equipment, earth moving equipment, chemicals, agricultural goods. We are selling these products like gangbusters to the world economy because the dollar is so low. Conversely, because the dollar is so low, the imports that we buy from the rest of the world are relatively more expensive to American consumers, and this is putting inflationary pressure on the U.S. economy. There has to be an equilibrium, a new equilibrium, in which the dollar rises a bit, not enough to choke off our exports, right. but to reflect the greater vitality of the U.S. economy, uh, which is now underappreciated in the rest of the world. And a stronger dollar will moderate the inflation pressures in the United States, 
won't shock off, choke off our exports. And I think this will happen gradually. I see the dollar rising towards the end of 2008 to a higher level than today. And the euro is grossly overvalued, especially because the EU is about to go into a period of slower growth, maybe even recession. And there's no reason why the euro should be so strong. As the European Central Bank cuts their interest rates, the euro will float down a bit with it. Well, that was great. Now we're all experts on the U.S. currency, so thank you very much. I hope you are, because I'm not. We're all <laughs> students together. All right. Thank you.